original function at pi on 3. So you have a point that's on the tangent line. Okay? So what's y of pi on 3? Okay, just go back here. Plug in pi on 3 and pi on 3. Sine of pi on 3, you said, is already root 3 on 2, and cos of pi on 3 is a half. So I now have 4 times root 3 on 2 times a half. This is root 3. Agreed? negative 2, and I know that I have an xy pair that's on my tangent line called pi on 3, comma root 3. Now that I have a slope and a point, I'm going to plug them into here to find b. And I'll write out the equation of the tangent line. And again, this is the most basic question you need to be able to tackle in this class. B wouldn't be like a whole number. Probably not in this case. More of a complex or like a loop. It will be a, an irrational number most likely in this case. So I've got an irrational guy there and an irrational guy here. So let's see. Y is root 3. I can't see anything right there. You can't see? Why not? What's the matter? I moved a little arm down for what you. What about all the people down in the back? What about you the people in the back? Why don't you just take the like monitors here. out? Where do you move it? On the other side. Other room. Fine. Why do you always want to go to another room and see something? What does that mean? It's freaking me out, man. Because there's too many monitors and you can't see. <laughs> The whole, every room has all these monitors in it. You wouldn't want you guys to get bored now. now? Does it. Not, not when I took economics here. Oh yeah? Yeah. Surprise. Alright. There. That will give us B. Correct? Plug in known x, y pair that's on the line. Plug in known slope. Find B. So what's B? B is going to be root 3 plus 2 pi on 3. Oh, but okay, so strange looking B, but it is what it is. So now we just write our equation of tangent line. Y, dependent variable of tangent line, equals the slope of tangent line, negative 2, we discovered that very early on, times independent variable of tangent line, plus B, root 3 plus 2 pi on the book, they may have this simplified a little bit into a single expression without adding fractions together, but it's not that big a deal for me. You guys getting trounced by this, or what? Are you okay? Justin, I hear you sadly gasping. It's a lot of work. Okay, I'm glad that's all it is. Good. Maker. This is all so this is the equation. This is all 3.4, you are correct. It's a lot of work. Two dollars. Right. Right. Roger's counting down the time for you. How much trick work are we Two doing hours. for this class? It's only been an hour. <laughs> I know, forever. it's so exciting. It, it feels like five minutes, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. How much, how much trick work are we doing for count one? Like three, uh, a lot. Well, 3.4, what else? 3.4 is specifically that because it's, it's the introduction to the derivatives of these things. But these, these are not going to pop up in derivatives all over the place. Uh -huh. Right? It's like the exponential. Once we did the exponential yesterday, it's not going to pop up in all these other functions since you now know how to deal with it. So it's not just limited to this section that you have trig functions. They're going to start appearing in many sections. Okay. Chapter 4 as well. And then the rest. What's that? And the rest. And the rest. Actually, what? Oh, yeah, 5. Yeah, yeah 5. Did you say that? So 4 and 5. Okay. The chain of something is the chain of The chain of command? Yeah, I'm in charge. You're down there. <laughs> uh, no, the... Uh, <laughs> Uh, the, the chain rule. Chain. Um, I think I was mistaken. I had the uh, the titles that? incorrect. Um, oh. We're doing derivatives. We're doing 3.5 derivatives rate of change. Okay. So it's not the uh, not chain rule. Yeah. I'll say that for tomorrow, which is a good idea anyway because it's related to the other section that is coupled with it tomorrow anyway. Those two kind of go hand in hand. Okay. Any questions about trig functions and their derivatives? Do you want to do one more like this or not? You're okay. Yep. It's so much. Can you do a slightly easier one? I mean, uh, around sure. the same. Or the same ruthlessness. How do you want it? I guess we use the same one so we can see how it is. Or we can just go to number. Oh, we're going to go to number 53. So you can just keep the part of the one. 
here eventually. Don't say that. Oh, I am right now. I'm just hanging with you guys. Right here? Oh, this. Oh, I thought that was um, your thing. Yeah, this is my. The function is cos x. It gets ugly. Over 1 minus cos x. Well, you're supposed you to find the equation of the tangent line and again, x yeah. equals pi on 3. They don't still have the full strip, do they? Oh, yeah. Yep, this is a lot of stuff. So the process should be basically the same, just a different function to deal with. So the first thing we need is the slope of that tangent line, which is the same as the slope of the curve, which is y prime. So y prime as a function Wait, can you erase that top part? Got it there? Yeah. Why? Because it's bothering me. <laughs> you confuse everyone. Whatever, whatever you can write. I'm thinking about your other student. Right, I'll erase this too. So that <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to draw a little cat face. Think I'm bothering you? Oh, no, it's going to be perfectly fine. That's OK. It's a triangle nose. It's a fishy mouth. Does that bother you? Or is that okay? Just leave it right there. <laughs> Fine. The derivative is going to entail a quotient rule. So bottom, 1 minus cos x times the derivative of the top, negative sine x minus, do the quotient rule, top cos x times the derivative of the bottom. What is the derivative of 1 minus cos? minus cos is sine x. Agreed? Because the derivative of 1 is 0. The derivative of cos is negative sine. Coupled with that negative makes it positive. Okay? Okay. Bottom, 1 minus cos, quantity squared. is, do you want to try to cancel something, or you just want to plug the number in and compute the slope? Can you cancel I think you can cancel. I'm looking at the distribution yeah, again. If you distribute negative sine x under the negative cos x, you get a positive sine cos. This is a negative sine cos, that will go away. it will make the computation in a second easier. But, you know, if you don't notice that in the first place, then it just is what it is. We'll go ahead and do it. So apparently, if I distribute this to here, these will cancel. So all I'm left with above is negative sine x times what? Sorry, can't count. Negative sine x over 1 minus cos x quantity squared. Here's our derivative. Wait, of what? What's that? That's our derivative of this function, right? Negative sine x times negative cos x is just cos sine. Oh, okay, no, 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 no. Minus cos sine, see you later. The other term I would have is negative sine times the one, so I just have the negative sine. Okay? I forgot to put this term. Alright, 